Okay, good morning, friends. Uh, yesterday, we have been discussing about the very nature of marketing research. And uh, just to revise on whatever that discussion that we have made uh, in the last few classes about marketing research, uh, one of the important pertinent questions that we addressed was why it's very important for us to pursue marketing research. What are the necessities for a company to conduct a marketing research? Well, friends, as we discussed yesterday, in order to find out, in order to find out or rather in order to bridge the gap between the consumer and the company, we need to conduct the marketing research. There has to be some kind of a synergy that has to be established between the company as well as the customers. Well, you know, the company has to come up with the products and services as per the needs and demands of the customer. Well, the customer would pay the compensation in return of services and goods from the company. In order for this exchange to happen, there has to be a proper understanding between marketing research uh, between the corporates and the customers themselves. So marketing research is a systematic tool in, order, in, in uh, bridging this gap. Marketing research gets two of these verticals together Marketing research makes sure that the transaction between the corporate and the customer happens seamlessly. As we discussed yesterday, you know, it can be B with a product. Through market research, the corporates can come up with what are the new products that are required or demanded or wanted by the consumers. Or rather, whatever the products or services that we have already are will there be any kind of will there be any kind of changes that are required that are required by the consumer side even this kind of a demand uh, this kind of a uh, requirement that we need to address that can be uh, found out by doing marketing research now marketing research also helps in fixing the price for the goods and services offered by the company what should be the optimal price that has to be charged by the company so that the, the, the customers find it very convenient to purchase them. Not just only convenience, the customers can think of affording that, uh, that product. What should be that optimal price? You know, um, that can be found out by the marketing research. In addition to that, marketing research also helps us to find out how best we can do the promotion. We have different promotion medias uh, through which you know, we can create the awareness about the product to, amongst the customers. We have different sort of medias. For example, we have a social media, we have a broadcast media, we have, uh, we have traditional media, we have outdoor media. Now, which of these media is suitable for my kind of promotion? Let's suppose if your target customers are more online, then you know you probably end up spending more money, or you probably investing. You you probably end up investing more uh, onto online marketing rather than traditional or outdoor marketing. All right. So basically, what marketing does, research does is it bridges the gap between the corporate and the customers and helps the corporates to understand the customer in a better manner. Now, if you just look at these are some of the examples, like a manager, for instance, a food company, FMCG food company, is asking a question, whether the product design that I have already made, is, will that lead to a good brand image? A question can come from the competitor. How can I monitor my sales and retail trade activities in order to survive in the business, in order to make sure that I sustain the competition? Or there can be another question like, you know, manager in the industrial tour market may ask a question, to whom am I losing the sales? How, where, whether it's a problem with the marketing executives, whether it's a problem with the pricing, whether it's a problem with the promotion, whether it's a problem with the distribution. In order to find out the root cause of the problem for loss in sales, you probably do a marketing research. Okay, so these are some of the instances where you conduct marketing research. However, it is not only these instances, there can be n number of researches. For example, analyzing, understanding the market potential uh, for exporting, analyzing, you know, 
for a market potential for importing or growing economic conditions or growing technological changes or even political changes or even some indicators which will uh, which will help us to understand whether this feasibility of the business is possible or not now you know we have discussed about marketing research uh, what uh, what what it is all about it requires the mainly the, a lot of information and the marketing research uh, gathers a lot of information, analyzes that information in a more systematic manner to come up with a lot of intelligence. And uh, some of the definitions for marketing research uh, are it's a systematic approach and it is object-oriented approach. Market research follows a definite process in which it is systematically covers a lot of other things so that you know we can arrive at the proper result it is objective in nature because uh, every marketing activity that we undertake comes up with some kind of a problem solving or some kind of a you know you know it is it could be related to a, some kind of an objective in order to increase the market share the objective could be increase the brand awareness the objective could be uh, improvise on the sales the objective is to find out how your product will perform with respect to your competitor. So all these are objectives. All right, so uh, marketing research also includes, it is specifying uh, what info is required, designing the method to collect the information, managing and implementing the collection of data, analyzing the results, communicating the findings and their implications. So this is all about uh, few things about what marketing research is all about. In apart from that, whatever that's been said, uh, marketing is also a planning collection and analysis of data, relevant data, which will help us to do a marketing decision so that, so that the communication of the results of this analysis uh, is made to the management and management is in a better position to take a proper decision so that they can retain the existing customer at the same time they can, they can outshine their competition as well okay so this is the very nature of marketing research so we have also discussed about what are the three different types of functional roles of research activity in a marketing field the first one is the descriptive function where the marketing research helps in describing the problem the nook and depth and uh, the nook and depth of the problem so basically it tries to understand the problem Suppose, say, for example, for uh, if the sales is going down, let's suppose if the sales is going down, uh, it always makes sense for any manager to look into the historic data for last five years. Probably that last five years data will throw out a lot of intelligence about the sales fluctuations. This is a typical example for descriptive function of marketing research. Okay, and uh, apart from that, Marketing research also includes the diagnostic function where it diagnoses the problem. Let's suppose if the sales is going down, there could be n number of reasons for it. It could be a pricing problem, it could be a problem with the employees, it could be a problem with advertising. We need to figure out, we need to find out what is the exact problem for decline in the sales. So basically we need to diagnose the problem. Basically, we need to understand what are symptoms of the problem so that we can properly address them. So marketing research also functions as a diagnostic function. It also works as a diagnostic function. The third important functional role of marketing research is all about being very predictive in nature. What is that predictive in nature means? Predictive in nature means the marketing research helps managers to understand the future possibilities. Future possibilities in terms of consumer buying behavior. Future possibilities with respect to pricing, pricing whether the prices are going to decline or prices are going to go up. Future possibilities with respect to competition. Future possibilities with respect to changes in the economic factors, economic indicators, for example, GDP, inflation, employee rate, forex rate, changes, and how could that economic changes implicate 
the way you do your business. Okay, so these are some of the three pillars of your marketing research. One is the predictive, second one is the diagnostic, and third one is very descriptive in nature. All right, now let's go forward and try to understand more. The importance of marketing research, it's the unrelenting drive for quality and customer satisfaction. That is what is the major focus of marketing research. Every company, every company for that matter, tries to give the best and best quality and tries to give the good customer satisfaction to its customer base. And this is the only way, this is the only way by which any company can survive or any company can retain its market share. So in order to achieve that, marketing research definitely helps. And it's very, it's, it's, it's very important, paramountly, to keep existing customers because we already know that there is a rise of CRM era uh, because it's always cheap. It's always not so expensive to retain the existing customer rather than building up the new customer. A research has been uh, done in this regard and it was found that new customers Gaining the new customers, looking out for a new customers is 33% more expensive than retaining their existing customers. So therefore, most of the companies would like to retain their existing customers rather than building new customer base. Well, uh, marketing research also helps in uh, understanding the ever-changing market uh, field. Now. There are two types of research that we have discussed already. The one is the basic and applied research. Basic research is, is very basic in nature, very simple in nature, and it is uh, it not necessarily uh, related to profit of the company. Okay, so applied research is a problem-solving research. So there is a, some kind of a problem, and you conduct a research and you solve the problem. Okay, so that is the difference between basic and applied research. All right. Let's quickly go and try to understand uh, what are the three broad categories in which marketing research can be classified. The first one is the programmatic. Okay, so in case of programmatic, this research is conducted to develop marketing options through which, uh, through market segmentation, opportunity analysis, and customer attitude and product usage studies. So in programmatic research, we are trying to understand how we can come up with a program so that we can come up with a proper segmentation of the customer and targeting the same kind of a customer so that our maximum utilization of opportunity can happen. Okay, programmatic research also arises from management needs to obtain the market over review periodically. Apart from that, uh, apart from that, you know, uh, for example, you know, outdated market information to support marketing decision making that is avoided um, it, it, with all respects uh, because you know we don't want to take any decisions based on outdated information. Uh, otherwise, you know, your decisions will be outdated, they will not be counted, and probably they, they may result in uh, some kind of a losses. Okay, so next uh, type of approach is selective, uh, which is used to test the decision alternatives, some examples of testing concepts for new products, it could be related to advertising copy, or even testing and test marketing. All right. So even um, the third kind of an approach is evaluating nature. Evaluative uh, advertising, I mean, evaluative research basically talks about doing the evaluation, doing the testing, doing, finding out whatever the decisions that we have already made, that we have already implemented, are they working enough or not? Are these decisions are giving us the desired results or not. So this is found out by evaluative research. For example, an organization comes up with a training program, trains the employees, and tries to find out whether there is an increase in the employee's productivity or not. You need to 
find out, in order to find out the increase in the productivity of the employees, we need to study, we need to measure the employee productivity. And for that, we need to do a research. You measure that and you compare. As, as a researcher, we compare the results of productivity before the training and after the training. Once the employee undergoes the training, how was his productivity before the training and how was his productivity after the training. So by doing this kind of a comparative study, we can establish that whether the training period was effective or not. Whether the investments that are being made on training, did they really give us the return on investments or not? We can find it out. Okay. Apart from that, you know, a company can come up with an advertisement and whether this advertising is resulting in sales or not. In order to find that out, we can do a small marketing research. Okay. Um, well, Okay, the mandatory value for marketing research in making a strategic decision. Uh, well, the marketing research helps us in a very, very, very eminent way. Uh, some of the things uh, to mention here is, you know, uh, in a nutshell, to tell you in one way is you cannot, we cannot really do a business without doing marketing research. We cannot, it's otherwise the same as saying that, you know, we cannot do a business without understanding the customers. We cannot do business without understanding how people buy. We cannot do business without understanding how people perceive the brand images. Okay, so for that to uh, understand, I mean, for that to figure out, for that to evaluate, we need to do a very significant research. Marketing research also helps in analyzing the problem. It helps in uh, segmenting the problem. It will help us in identifying the proper target customers. Marketing research also helps in planning and implementation. It also helps us in um, analyzing the target market as well. Okay, so one of the important things that every manager has to remember is this marketing research does cost company. Okay, so for this market research to be conducted, where the company has to have a separate budget for this. Okay, so it's very important for a marketer, I mean, it's very important for anybody for that matter to understand whether at the first place do we require to find out, do we really require to do a research or not. We need to find that out, whether to conduct the research or not. A manager can be faced with several alternative solutions to a problem and should not instinctively call for applied marketing research. Not everything, not every problem that is faced by the marketing managers need not be researched. Some can go with a gut feeling, some can go with an experience, some can go with uh, an advice from the expert and things like that. The first decision to be made is whether to conduct marketing research at all, if it is necessary, if it is yes, then yes, we can go ahead, otherwise uh, no is the big answer. Okay, if you know for sure that this is the solution for the problem and this, the experts also claim the same thing, then, then probably we may not have to do the uh, research. In a number of situations, it's best to not conduct the marketing research. Uh, these are some set scenarios. For example, first one is, uh, lack of funds could be one reason where you know you may not probably have a sufficient time and fund or resource to do the business I mean to do the business research second one is insufficient funds to implement decisions from the research so if you have 
these kind of two resources lack in resources then probably it is always better off to not to conduct any research all right uh, in a number of situations like research results would not be useful clients may be hard pressed to use the information and the secondly poor timing in the marketplace marketing research should not be undertaken if the opportunity for successful entry into the market has already been passed okay so having done this uh, the decision if the decision is already been made if the marketing research may be used uh, improperly in a situations like when you know you don't require to do a marketing research when managers cannot agree on what they need to know to make a decision okay when decision making already exists when the decision making mechanism already exists then you know you don't have to do any marketing research in a number of situation when the cost of conducting research outweigh the benefits the potential new products with large profit margins may have greater potential deciding how to conduct or whether to conduct the marketing research at the first place or not and you know it all depends on three parameters number 1 is the market size second one is the profit margin whether it is small or large okay let's try to understand different um, situations over here we have a small market share for eye glass replacement okay cost likely to be greater than the benefit so it's a very it's a very small profit margin so tire valve extension wherein the profit margins are very very minimum so it's it's very wise to do wise to say that you know you don't have to really do a marketing research here in this case just to understand the tire valve extension do not conduct marketing research for small things but on the other hand you know we can do a lot of research with respect to these things like say possible benefits greater than the cost for example ultra expensive lamborghini type of sportswear you know if the companies come up with this kind of a sportswear probably by selling that they can make a lot of profitability and then marketing research makes a lot of sense in this case okay perhaps conducting the marketing research would make a lot of sense here okay so now let's talk about market size which is a very large market size and in this case we are facing a scenario wherein we get a very small profit margin and in this case the benefits are likely to be greater than the costs if the benefits are likely to be greater than the cost like say for example stoppers frozen entries could be one example crest throttle control to space okay so probably in this case the manager can do have a due diligence whether to uh, conduct the marketing research or not because clearly for one reason that benefits are greater than cost if this is the situation then absolutely no doubt that you know we can go ahead and conduct the marketing research by all means well if the market size is large and we are talking about large profit margin and in this case the benefits are likely to be greater than the cost so definitely definitely uh, we are going to conduct the research for example we are talking about the medical equipments we are talking about high definition television sets so here with no hesitation we can go ahead and conduct the marketing research apart from that you know we will have a small talk on internet on marketing research how the internet is having a profound influence on on uh, on the marketing research what are the growth drivers for internet marketing research over the period of time we several companies have established themselves as the most fortune 500 companies for example walmart is one such company which is doing extremely well second one is alibaba is another chinese based company which is doing extremely well flipkart is an indian based company which is doing extremely well you know these are the companies which have achieved the potential which have achieved the highest potential of completely utilizing their capabilities through internet well this is one media which will give us 
seamless one-to-one -one connect between the company and the customer. This, this provides, this media provides more rapid access to business intelligence and thus it also allows for better and faster decision making. And in addition to that, the, this media, this internet media improves the firm's ability to respond quickly to the customer needs and makes a terrible shift within a very short period of time. Now, how it is possible, you might be wondering, you know, well, you know, if you understand through the market research, if one finds out through the market research that, if one finds out through the market research that combining two complementary products would give a lot of sales, then you know, then, you know, uh, a company executive can combine the two complementary products and start selling them online. So that could be, that is the power of internet, we could say. Okay, so uh, so that could be the power of internet, we could say. Uh, secondly, secondly, uh, Secondly, uh, the internet improves the firm's ability to respond. And third one is the, uh, the internet facilitates the conducting follow-up studies and longitudinal research very predominantly. Uh, well, you know, it's very cost-effective to do research on the internet, and you know, you can always approach the customers for the feedback uh, again and again over the period of time, over the time horizons. For example, you know, uh, you are tracking the, you, especially you know, when it comes to the tracking business studies, wherein you are trying to change, we are trying to see how the consumer buying behavior changes over the period of time. Okay, uh, let's suppose you do a small conduct a small research for 60 people, and then you can contact the same 60 people probably after one year probably after two years, probably after three years, and repeating the questionnaire. And this is what is known as longitudinal research. The research which is used onto the customers, onto the same set of customers, for over the period of time, for over the generations, over the period of time. Suppose the same set of customers, you do a market research, you conduct a small survey, and then you know you collect the information. And that is for the first year, second year, third year. You track the same customers. That sort of research is known as longitudinal research. And definitely, internet facilitates these kind of longitudinal research. Another important benefit or growth driver for internet marketing research is it slashes the labor and time intensive research activities or even associated costs as well, including mailing, Telephone solicitation and data entry, data tabulation, as well as reporting. Okay, um, we can just try to understand what are the different types of advantages the marketing research, internet marketing research has. It gives us the rapid development, rapid collection of information, and apart from that, uh, it's real time reporting happens here. If certain phenomena is happening in the market, and probably that period of time, you know, you can actually, uh, you know, you can gather intelligence uh, from, uh, you know, from the internet just by looking into or tracking the kind of changes that we see. It can dramatically reduce the cost. It can dram dramatically reduce the cost because. Uh, very less manpower is required to do the internet marketing research, and probably you know one person can send out the EU research forms to thousands and thousands of people, and they can collect and they can do the analysis. So we need not employ people to collect uh, data. The data is readily available. Uh, online as well in the form of secondary data, which we can always use to conduct research. Well, so that is a thought. Uh, second, third one is, 
internet can one of the advantage one of the very important advantage of doing a marketing research online is lot of personalization is possible lot of personalization is possible with respect to marketing research on internet because you know you can let's suppose take an example of telephone research we are calling people and we are trying to gather the intelligence or trying to execute the custom i mean survey from these people and here in this case lot of personalization is possible with respect to internet media another important uh, thing in this case of internet uh, marketing is higher response rates you know people the internet gives you a a choice it gives an option to respond whenever you want it whenever the customers want it. so therefore it vouches for higher response rate okay so internet marketing always um, has an impact of the internet by having ability to conduct the hard to research hard to reach kind of people like say for example doctors high income professionals or even top management of the large firm you know these are some of the hard to reach people and you can reach through internet and you can always collect uh, their point of view of doing a profound uh, marketing research uh, now how marketing research industry uh, functions you know the, there are different structures of marketing research industry here and you know you can just see a uh, level 1 level 2 level 3 as well as level 4 level 1 is all about the corporate may marketing departments wherein each and every organization would have their own inbuilt marketing research department suppose say for example hp is a mar- hp has its own marketing research ibm has its own marketing research department so that is a level one second level is advertisement agencies i mean ad agencies will act like uh, uh, information collecting points between the clients uh like the corporate and the customers okay so this is the level 2 wherein a company is trying to outsource its uh, research activities to some third party probably in this case it's an ad agency okay so you can go for a level 3 where the research suppliers are available number 1 is syndicated service firms syndicated service firms are those firms which will supply required data within no time let's suppose a uh, syndicated uh, let's suppose you know there is a list of credit card holders from icici bank you know a syndicated service firms would sell this information to uh, a company or to a client for a substantial amount of money so these are syndicated service firms custom ad hoc research firms are level 4 is a uh, field service firm so these are uh, different firms which are there in existence and they are into different levels okay so uh, let's try to understand these levels one by one more in detail uh, level 1 is all about the primary information users and these are the corporate marketing departments and these are the ones which are the ultimate users of the research data provided by the marketing research departments their primary business is the sales of the products and services okay level 2 is all about uh, a different uh, information users for example ad agencies these are also in position of serving the corporate clients their primary business is the development and execution of advertising campaigns to properly fulfill this they often need to do a market research okay so uh, you can talk about the research suppliers custom and syndicated marketing firms they represent uh, the uh, front line of the research industry and these people the syndicated research services they do sell a uh, lot of services they do design the research studies they do analyze the results they do recommendations to the clients and in addition to that they may also buy data collection and other services from the field service firms so 
basically uh, these are the syndicated firms which will help uh, as a research suppliers. Uh, research suppliers in level 3 could be customs or even ad hoc research firms which are nothing but these are the companies that carry out customer customized marketing research to address specific projects for corporate uh, clients. Okay, so these are some of the companies uh, which do ad hoc based research. Whatever the requirement that is there coming from the corporates, they just conduct it and they just give it on ad hoc basis. Okay, the second one is syndicated service firms. As I mentioned, the companies that collect, package and sell the general market research data which is in sometimes available in the public domain this research data is sold over to their other companies okay data collectors field uh, service firms they collect the data for syndicated firms the custom research firms or even ad agencies as well okay so this is what is the homework I would like to propose to you. What are these steps in marketing research process? So you can always find out, yeah, as we already know, as we already know that marketing research follows its own step-by-step -step process. It has its own step-by-step -step process. Now, now, what are the first steps? Of market research. Now let me give a small clue so that you know we can address this problem. Is beginning of the market research is to define the objectives or even could be identification of the problem. Okay so then you come up with the objectives then you do the literature review, then you design the uh, research design, then we go forward and try to analyze the data that is being collected through the surveys, through the observations, and after that we do recommendations and then we do give suggestions. So this is a systematic process for doing marketing research. However, there is a lot of extensive material is available online a student can refer to these uh, online material as to understand how marketing research really functions. Well, marketing research has to be done with proper design. If we are conducting a, some sort of a research without knowing how it should be done, without knowing how it should be done, then probably the companies would end up wasting a lot of revenue or a lot of money on doing research activity. So a basic foundation has to be established before we begin doing marketing research. Before we begin doing marketing research, we need to come up with a proper research design. What is a, market, a research design is? Research design is nothing but it's a blueprint or a framework for conducting the marketing research projects. Well, you know, when we are constructing a building, we need to have a proper plan. Only then we can conduct, I mean, only then we can build a building. That sort of a building is known as a blueprint. Similarly, on the same line, if you want to 
conducts a small research, there has to be some kind of uh, parameters which have to be established within this uh, document. Okay, now research design is that paper. This is nothing but it's a blueprint and this is one standard blueprint on which the entire results or the entire research will be built upon. The entire research will be built upon on this research design. Now, what are the things that are included? Research design constitutes a blueprint. Research design aids the research in allocating the limited resources by posing crucial choices in methodology. Okay, uh, research design helps in distributing the different types of research resources that are available to the researcher. Research design is also a plan and structure of investigation so that con conceived as to obtain answers to research questions. The plan is overall scheme or program of the research. It includes an outline of what the investigators will do from writing hypothesis and their operational implications to the final analysis of the data. Research design, you know, it expresses uh, both the structure of the research problem, the framework, the organization, configuration of the relationships, uh, among variables of study and plan of the investigation. The essentials, what we need to have within the research design. What we need to have within the research design, what are the ingredients of uh, a particular research design? What a research design should consist of in a simple words? Well, it's a document which is an activity and time-based each and every activity is planned in a timed, in a phased manner. And for each activity, the deadline is given in this case. So we go on performing or implementing those activities based on the time frame. Second important thing is it's a plan always based on the research questions. What these research questions are in turn, they are the result of your objectives of the research. Each and every objective of the research is converted into the questions, and these questions are executed to the subjects. Okay, so that is the second one. Third one is a guide for selecting uh, sources and types of information. It's a guide. It's a framework for specifying the relationship among the studies variables, and it's also a, a procedural outline for every research activity. And it's a one-in-all one document which addresses all the different uh, issues or as to how we are going to conduct the research uh, one by one uh, that is narrated in the stage. So, uh, this is a brief about research design. We will try to understand about the research design in future classes. And for this moment of time, this should be enough.